we're doing? What are we doing? Is it, it's not Thursday. We're taking a selfie? Is it a video? Is it a video? It is a video. I don't know. Is it a video? What's going on? Hey guys! <laughs> Jason and Mike here from Earthworks on another uh, episode on YouTube here. <laughs> so uh, I just caught Michael. He has no idea what we're doing. Well, actually, he knows what he's doing all day. Yeah. But we are here actually at Strike Zone, the infamous uh, big marlin that they have painted here in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, it's a cool fishing store. These guys do everything outdoors. Um, they sell lots of stuff. It's a really cool, really cool company. And um, we got to do what's behind me uh, at least like eight years ago because you weren't with us then right? no it was before my time it's probably 10 yeah. years ago we did this project behind us uh upon this waterfall well actually a waterfall going into a uh, existing lake and uh we got to do it with a bunch of contractors i was just telling mike it was like 80 people out here with our distributor back in the day um but it's been a long time and this thing needs a facelift doesn't it absolutely that's it, why i'm here that's why michael's yeah. here it doesn't meet michael's standards you know from 10 years ago so um we are going to go ahead and rip this thing out. We're in the middle of the tear out right now. Uh, we're bringing in larger rock, a different kind of rock. We're doing the Tennessee Fieldstone. You've seen our builds with that material before. So a lot of character on this one. We're going to go more height. The, exist, or the old water feature was maybe two feet high. We're going to go another, another foot. We're aiming for the three, three and a half foot tall range. The whole reason why I keep stepping so far back is number one, the viewpoint from traffic. I'm trying to get as close to the traffic as possible because the further you step away from the water feature, um, everything becomes a little smaller. You know, certain rocks might cover the falls a little bit more. So always double checking my work really for the sake of the enjoyment of others, not so much myself, but I want it to be the best possible. So putting myself in the most viewed area while I build frequently just allows execution, you know, perfection as close as possible to it. So what we're looking at here uh, is our intake area. This is the lid to a unit that houses the pump. This is a little bit different than what we typically use in the smaller water features. Um, it's usually in a vault or a skimmer. This is a vault, it's a really deep vault. They call it a snorkel. And it creates, it's a big L. So if this was the snorkel, you know, your pump would be down here and then you have the centipede part. And there's actually aqua blocks all on top of the centipede. So it's just this intake point. You can even see just from this being the collection point, how much sediment gets drawn up over. I mean, this is just a pile of cobbles down in there uh, with a bunch of sediment buildup. That's fine that that's happening because we always anticipate that kind of stuff. So just to point that out, this is a different system than what we typically use. We have a big, I'll try to pull some of these out so you can see. We used a big uh, three, inch, three inch flex pipe for this. Typically we're working with uh, inch and a half to two inch on the majority of our projects, but this is such a big scale. We have uh, a Surumi push in around 10,000 gallons per hour. Now we have a little bit going over to the fountain. So there's probably eight to nine, eight and a half maybe, uh, going through the waterfalls. So with that flow, we went with three inch pipe and two spillways, cause you can't put all, you can't put it, you can't put all that uh, water pressure through one spillway. It's just not meant to exert that amount of water. So we split it and did two. Yeah, so this being, a natural bottom pond. That means that there's no liner. We didn't install any rubber liner. This is all just, it's fed from a bigger retention pond behind the buildings and everything. So it's actually fed and kept full with a pump that's behind the building. So the challenge is like, obviously you can see like there's even some, it's right next to the road. So you get 
like trash and all this kind of crap ends up in here, unfortunately. But um, this is a good point because everything will get pulled into this side and the, the owner can therefore clean it out pretty easily. So the majority of our previous builds that you've seen on our video channel, um, it's, we haven't had one this scale in this application. So we're pretty versatile as far as what we can install and what we can do to you know, systems of water ecosystem wise. Something this large, uh, what, what we're actually doing is just creating a higher dissolved oxygen level in this pond, which is gonna help um, the life of it to begin with. Like that's the start is having dissolved oxygen. So that comes from the waterfalls entering into the water. So once you get aeration flowing, that allows proper oxygen levels for fish, plants, everything like that to start thriving. They do have another aerator down underneath the marlin over there. So both ends have a good, uh, good aer aeration system on it. There's, we can keep pushing and pushing as far as helping the biology of this pond. We have the capabilities to do big intake bays to skim the surface if there's a problem with algae or duckweed jets, we can install jets just to agitate the whole top layer of the water because the majority of the problem with a lot of ponds is just debris settling all the way down the bottom. So we can install large intake skimming systems. We can do, we can even build bog filtration, which is a natural upflow filter to filter out a pond this size. You know, it's, it's pretty cool. Like you can rehab, you know, a lake if we wanted to. We didn't do any biological filtration on this one. We're just adding a little bit more aeration and I can tell you this fish are gonna be super happy. But yeah, it's a cool pond. He has some of these natural lilies already in there and I'm excited to see what it's gonna look like in a year or two from now. Day two and a half right now. Everything's running, which is super epic. Uh, we got, we went with a medium sized urn. I think we might have discussed doing a large one in the earlier videos. It just fitted the application, the space a little bit better for us, less splash. They're not gonna lose as much water out of this pond behind us. Um, what we did, we originally were gonna do a large aqua block to get a pooling area up top to start our first waterfall and we scratched that idea. We were a little limited on liner because we wanted to get as much action with pooling and waterfalls as possible. So we stuck two spillway bowls, or not bowls, just spillways up there, and it's looking great. Yeah, it's two spillways because um, this right here is a 10,000, um, not the Oxygate pump, it's not the Pro pump. Surumi. Surumi, thank you. We have a 10,000 Surumi in this guy that's gonna be pumping all this stuff out, and you can't put it through one spillway because it only handles about 8,000 gallons per hour. So we got 10,000 gallons per hour running through this thing. Yep. I love how Michael did the bottom down here. Um, 
you know, John behind the camera wants him to tout on how much cooler <laughs> this water feature is than the one that I built like well, what, eight years ago. It is. Oh well, it is. It is. It is. Yeah. It, it is. It is. <laughs> I, I, granted, it is. It is much. It is much cooler. Styles change. This is way yeah. way cooler. He's got some more height here. Um, this right here screams present to that road. Got a cool owner here, Dave Workman with uh, Strike Zone. Awesome fishing store. This right here is going to catch people. Right. So I'm excited to drive past this thing at night, to be honest with you, because we have each waterfall lit. We also have a total of one, two, three, four, five landscape lights that we're going to just, you know, splash all of this action with. So it's definitely going to pop a little bit more than it was. We got lighting and all that stuff, wrap up, and we'll be done. So now we're on the we're on the dock where the majority of the customers, I feel like are gonna come out because it's like a little interaction spot. Kids can throw fish and feed the fish in here. So you still see all the falls, but really from this point of view, um, I only really aim the bottom waterfall opening up enough for this view. And then obviously the urn gives you 360 degrees of viewing area. So that pops too. Um, yeah, and you just got this massive retaining wall of rock holding all that earth back for our elevation so it's pretty neat looking at it from over here too we have the a team on it we got chris murphy and brian burke doing some detailed stuff behind me um, once again i can't give those guys enough credit they make all this possible for sure this is a pretty interesting job. Uh, I don't know if I recapped or not, but we tore out an old water feature that was in and it was built out of completely different stones. So what you're looking at behind me is uh, all new stuff that we brought in. We pushed the size up. Like we used some of our bigger stuff on the lot that we had just to give it that girthy feeling from uh, the street view with all the traffic passing by and everything. We wanted it to really stand out. so. I think we've accomplished that. Uh, we've added three additional lights on top of their existing landscape lighting out here. So everything's going to be lit up. The waterfalls, the rocks have splashes, the plantings have lighting to it too. So that's excellent. And earlier today, I was kind of biting my nails because I had to get permission from the owner of Strike Zone. Um, to add a couple plants and you know really give it that cherry on top look that earthworks likes to provide you know so he gave us the go-ahead so we brought out some more plants some splashes of color some stuff that's going to really interact well with the rocks too because we have this massive retaining wall and without plants to like soften that up it ends up being this real harsh kind of just grayness you know so we like to bring in some color soften up all the rocks and we're going from there. Chris, which favorite rock is yours, dude? Amber, Amber that waterfall, it's, it's a kind of waterfall. Right? Yeah? I, I call it this one, though. This rock? It's probably my favorite one. It's not a rock. <laughs> All right, so Brian's favorite rock is the fountain, he claims. Let's be honest, though. This rock is Chris's favorite rock. Chris is enjoying this big sheet rock. You know, that's, that's probably the, the biggest fall that we got here right there, smack dab in the center of everything. Once again, I'm Michael Fred Quatromini with Earthworks in Jacksonville. We're Northeast Florida's only certified aquascape contractor in town. And with this project, with me sitting next to the waterfalls, hopefully this is inspiring someone out there to go ahead and maybe tackle uh, dead space in the yard or even something as large as a natural bottom pond whether it's an office building or somewhere in their community, and they're looking to rehab it. So if you have any questions, even regarding a small fountain or a large system, like the one behind me here, uh, feel free to leave comments in the comment section below, or you can always contact us through the shop.